So, um, are there any adjustments or modifications to the agenda? <clears throat> When we look at the executive session item, mm -hmm. um, do we feel that that is descriptive enough to cover uh, actually accepting an offer of employment and mm -hmm. consideration of a offer of employment for the CEDs? Yes. Well, it sounds like uh, <laughs> you want to be more specific, and you were. So <laughs> in a public meeting. Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. So a potential employment. Looks like we're going to be done at 8.30, too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Duncan has anything to say about it. Acceptance. I'll stab him in the other eye. And then a potential offer of employment. And did I miss something? I don't think so. Okay, I want to add also the, um, which was going to be an executive session, but I think we're going to pull it up a little bit higher into public meeting, which is the floodplain zoning administrative officer appointment. Um, so we'll do that at, in replace of ahead of number six. Carl, did you have something else? Yes, under um, the plan purchases. Mm -hmm. Um, we received the quote for having mold mediation work done to one of the land records books. Okay. On one of the books, you said? Yes. The only one that got wet? The only one that, 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 that was missed when things were picked up and moved. Uh, okay. And also um, could come after number 17, a question mm -hmm. about the public portalettes that the town has put out because of flooding, I'm told. Okay. And somebody called in today and said that there was one that keeps getting tipped over and they're wondering if the town would just have it removed. The one okay. down at the Harvey part, I know I said the other day it was pushed over. Okay, uh, added and anything else? Okie doke. Um, reviewing invoices and orders. Duncan has the packet. We'll move it this way. Uh, I went through <coughs> and just underlined the items that are flood related expenses just to call them out if you're interested on that packet that I signed. So if you flip it over to the front, you'll see the underlined codes. Um, Would you mind a quick update on Rosemary? Uh, sure, Carl, do you want to give a quick update on Rosemary? So, she had done... Uh, she is not an employee of ours. Okay. Elected official. I just want, I hesitated a little bit because for employee confidentiality reasons, if it were an employee of the board, we should not be talking about that in open session. Rosemary is an elected official, which is different. I don't know if we have any health requirements. She does have your health insurance, so maybe. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it. We could, we'll talk about it in um, executive session. Okay. You probably hit the requirements that yep. would prevent us from disclosing. I think so too. Not that we can talk about anything. Yep. So good, we'll good not. call, but I think you're right. Uh, okay. Uh, reviewing invoices and orders. We just talked about um, reviewing and approving minutes from meet the meeting of August seventh, which is attached. We did get minutes for the fourteenth as well earlier today. Um, can we approve them both together? If you if have consensus to approve the fourteenth. I'm not sure if people had time to read them everyone, or not. Has everyone read through them? Maybe. In kind of a Trumpian way. Oh, okay. Yeah. So does that mean that you well, want we'll you would maybe hold on? Yeah, that's yeah, okay, yeah. time to log into his email. It's all about Mark. <laughs> uh, do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from August seventh. Motion. Do we have a second? 
Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Any select board issues or concerns? Uh, the other thing I'll bring up is that the FEMA Town Hall that is being sponsored by and maybe uh, co-hosting, I don't know about the co-hosting part, I might just be making that up, uh, is happening tomorrow evening from 5.30 until 7 p.m. at the Johnson Elementary School. If we see people or hear of people in passing, we should encourage attendance. Um, they might learn something about either their denial or their application or some other tidbit that they may not have already learned because people are always learning new things. So we should encourage that people attend. Is that tomorrow or Wednesday? Uh, geez, I gotta stop saying tomorrow. Wednesday from 5.30 to 7, thank you. And also I should just add to that the FEMA representation is at McClelland Hall, just above the elementary school. They are there six days a week, Monday through Saturday, uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Carl? 8 to 6 is the advertised hours. Yeah. So we should definitely utilize them while they're here, and given the state of our country, uh, we should use, utilize them while they are available to us. Okay, um, review, approve, warrants, licenses, and other actions. Uh, Rosemary's not here, did she, did she or Sue give you any other paperwork beyond? Uh, I asked last Friday if there was anything, and um, at that time there was the possibility of this deed book remediation. We didn't put it on the agenda because we didn't know if we would have anything for you. But okay. So no licenses or anything. Because basically this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up is Jason, Public Works <coughs> Report. How's everybody doing? Great, and you? Wonderful. Not pretty good. I have one question. There is, I should have brought it up to you. There's something I don't know. I feel it should be an executive session a little bit about a landowner in a, a road situation. Okay. Uh, I don't know that that would qualify for any executive session I can think of, unless there is potential litigation. Unless it could be sued. Depends on if he's going to go through with it. Does he threaten litigation? No. No, we just threaten to do something if we don't do something in the road. He's uh, doing, meaning doing work himself. Yeah, that's public. Right. I'll start with that. So there's a gentleman up on uh, Patch Road that wants to have the intersection change. And he's been talking to me about it for the better part of two years. And I tell him it's on our project list, which it is. Yep. But I tell him it's a lower priority project. We have nothing else going on that needs to get done. And we can fill the time, we'll do it. Yep. They want to turn the Y of the intersection into a T. Because people are turning around at all hours of the night and causing the dogs and stuff to get riled up and poaching deer. And I was called again today asking me if I could get it done before snow comes because of the, the deer hunt. So we tried, but I wasn't planning on the flood because it was proposed that we would do it in August in between the plot road project and great work. But obviously, our time frame to uh, you had already you had previously said that you would do that. We previously said that we we tried to squeeze it in August. That we, you know, if we had nothing else. Okay, to squeezing is squeezing. Okay. Got it. And then obviously some other stuff come up and we have got behind that we're catching back up now, but we're still behind the two or three weeks we dealt with the flood. Mm -hmm. And I told him it still might get done, but it's still a lower priority. And he said if it wasn't done soon that he was going to do the work himself. Okay. I, uh, I mean, 
My opinion on it is that anyone who decides to do work in the town's right of way doesn't have authority to do so. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yep. So, I, I mean, I would respond with, have you filled out a permit? We well, he hasn't. He's <clears throat> claiming that the town adopted a policy to turn all Y intersections into T intersections, which I'm not aware of. Okay. Well, um, I've never heard of that. that. I've never heard of that either. Do we have a lot of Y intersections? Not really, but some of them are a little bit wider to get the trucks down because it's probably the town. Right. They're trying to narrow it up so people can't <coughs> down over there because their goal is not in places. There, there is a, I don't know if it's actually in our road standards or not, but there's clearly a VTRAN standard that states that a T intersection is preferable over a Y intersection or a horseshoe um, intersection. So that could be what he's referring to. He, he didn't bring that up because I asked him if he was talking about what's in the that. He said, no, it was something that the town had changed six years ago to adopt. And I was like, well, six I'm going to years ago? look into this a little bit further. I wanted to bring the board up date. Okay. I mean, I feel like there should be probably a follow up if no one knows the policy and it was about six years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, we could look back yeah. and see if there's a policy. Um, but even so, it wouldn't mean that we're changing our plans necessarily for our spend. Uh, I would just add as background that the individual involved <clears throat> approached me when I was still working for the town and asked that it be done and he was told by the then road foreman that it would be done <laughs> okay. at, at some point in time. So I think the individual has a legitimate issue and concern with it not being done. I fully understand and appreciate Jason's um, position that he's in as well in terms of trying to shoe her. But just for, for background, this didn't come up overnight. It's been I got you. a long time. I mean, the, th the thing is that I hear you, and a complaint can't trump the other work that we've planned, especially if it's not there's not an urgent reason or an emergency reason, which it doesn't that's sound like there is, but it sounds like it's on your list. It, which it is. That's what I explained to him because he did say it was an issue that was talked about a while ago, and I told him that because there wasn't a uh, family culvert or a necessary road danger, you know, causing the traveling public any yep. problem, that it was low on my list of priorities. Which I'm not trying to push it down the line, I, but it is it is a low project that. Yeah, I mean, you have to make. So I guess my perspective is the board supports you in that prioritization of what you have on your docket. My only question: it, this might be impossible, but is is it possible for you to give him an idea of rough time frame, how long it might be before you can get to? Because I think you know, given what Duncan said, it is fair to be to be concerned and to hear the same thing again. You know, it's on my list. Uh, it might I told just him I was hoping to have it done before because we were going to be up working on the, the number of park grant projects so our equipment would be in the area. Mm -hmm. But the, the grant has to be done by the end of September 30th or we don't get paid. So that's priority. The grant and I told him after that and we, we try to squeeze it in. I told him I couldn't predict if we can do a flood. If something happens, obviously, I'm not, I can't promise it. He wanted me to promise it. Right. I can't promise it. I didn't know before it was coming. I don't think anyone did. So you're saying this fall, though? No. That was the goal. I mean, it's been the goal to do it. Okay. But he's getting a little worked up because it didn't happen in August, which... Do you but it comes you back to, like, you lost yeah. two solid weeks and probably closer to three or four weeks. Yeah. Do you have any sense whether or not the gravel that is currently in the Y intersections could be u reused? If that it's was the plan, was to try to, when I looked at it last fall, was to try to utilize as much of the material on site prior to gravel to bring in, but first take the topsoil and stuff out to set aside to bring the shoulders back in. You'd have to bring up some topsoil, but we've got some saved at the shop from the other project. So, so it probably wouldn't. It's not a high cost project, but 
when we do it, we wouldn't take it down enough so we can put it back where you know, to do it, put it back right if we're going to yeah. do it. You know. probably wouldn't take you more than a day to do it. I was I was thinking it would take probably a day and a half, depending on if we're going to move the sign and stuff like that. But, yeah, day and a half. Okay. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, like, Unfortunately, our policy list on the website may not incorporate everything that we expect that it does. But I don't see any policy referencing this, just for what it's worth. I'm uh, just looking really quickly. But, okay. So, that brings me to my report. We've got the uh, plot road is almost finished up. We're in the downhill slide. Uh, we're have, hoping to have it completed by Friday, and uh, we're going to start the grant project uh, Monday or Wednesday of next week. So, as far as that, uh, we're going to new skids for the forehead tank because the previous one is out of fresh drain and it's rotted. So we're getting some quotes for that to make sure it doesn't exceed the thousand. We're going to build it in-house. We're still doing the trash removal. Um, it looks like that we'll have to do it again this week. I know they're still done some time here. So I think they were going to. I saw. That we're going to try to bring it to the dumpster, the ones that could. I don't know if they're all bringing it to the dumpster. At the day after, maybe two days after, but I think it was the day after the dumpster was delivered, I drove down there and all of the debris that was out on lawns had been picked up. So yeah. I assumed they put it in the dumpster. Oh, you picked it up? Yeah, oh. the day after the meeting. I got you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. We got pictures of all that in time. For... So, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You want Jason and the crew to hold off until he hears the outcome of your discussion tonight? Um, down the agenda, you've got... Um, the state considerations for yeah, the debris removal. Yeah. I mean, we could pick that up now, actually, after Jason's report. Number 12. Let's do that. Let's actually just pull that one up. Say I can hang out for a little bit. I figured you might have questions about the cooler. About what? The cooler for the elementary school. Oh, yeah, yeah. We will. Yes. And yeah. Item okay. 18, Never mind. Yep. You're here for the... Here with us. Got it. Okay, what else you got, Jason? Uh, that was... That's about it, I guess. As far as the only other thing was the MSHA. I met with the inspector, all the signage and everything. He loved, loved the burns and the pit. As far as that, the screen, I guess he wants two more things addressed. The wants handrails and chains put on it. So there's rail and chain. Um, Carrail is not, which are in addition from the previous inspector. So we told him we'd do that. And then we were going over some stuff. Uh, about if we were to have, because he brought it up too, about having an outside vendor come in and do the processing and whether or not they could crush that still up in there. Uh, if they do, it relieves us of all liability of the intro stuff because they come in with their own intro number, so we don't have to have four parties or any of that stuff. It's all their thing at that point. So it brings a lot of things as far as do we have to get a, we have to get a first aid blanket and some kind of a first aid station to stage the stuff that's not in the sun direct sun too much because the director didn't get deteriorated by the sun he said okay and he checked over our first aid because when M shot comes. He was the guy that comes through this walk through. When MSHOT comes, if they come to do an inspection on call, they can inspect where the loader is too. So we have a square that's been painted in the shop that says loader that designates that for the loader spot because the loader is used in the pit, so they can only inspect that spot. So it doesn't tie the rest of the shop into the MSHOT for that reason. <coughs> so when he was there, he looked at the loader and the spot, and the only thing that he could inspect was the, the loader and the first aid kit, and which is all in compliance as far as nothing about moving the after inside the kit is good to go. We have gone just uh, doing the new kits every two years. They're only good for about two years. 
the vendor we got them through I don't know, eight months ago, you could get 12 or 14 wherever we go, it was like $20 a kit. That's ridiculous. She they expire after two yeah. years. Yeah. But, okay. So, I guess I would like to look into getting some quotes from outside vendors for processing, because there's not a lot left, really. If we had it done that way, I would just get it over with. And we could stockpile it at our lower staging area. And to find out if we can have a crusher or not. Because by talking to various people that have been involved for a fairly long time, it was one person's point of view why the crusher couldn't be there, another person understood that it was some residents that thought the crusher couldn't be there, so Every time I talk deed. to Ebony, he has a different story. It's so. in the deed. Huh? It's in the deed. It's in the deed. Yeah, I was going to, did we ever get clear on whether it was allowed or not? You're saying it's in the deed that it's not allowed? It's in the deed that it's not allowed. So if Bert, you indicated that Bert said he doesn't care. That's what he told me. If we could get, if we could do a one sentence, I, Bert, NATO, agree that this codicil number two in the deed is no longer in full for, for force and effect. We'd be good. So I don't I don't know if Barrett would be willing to sign something like that or not. But it's a good question. Let's write it up. Yeah. If it's a one liner, let's write it up. It's I mean Does it could be a, a one lawyer need sentence. to write it or can somebody other than a lawyer write it? Probably a lawyer has to write it, huh? I think it would be something that <coughs> Carl could write up. <coughs> you know, pretty easily. I mean it's there is there is the deed, um, and it's pretty specific in the deed. So, you know, you just if we if we reference the, you know, the recorded deed and that codicil, and, and he agreed yeah, that okay. it was no longer in full force and effect. It, you know, pretty simple, really. The benefit would be huge as far as to have it crushed. It'd yeah, a much superior product for its packing and everything. It'd be real beneficial to have it crushed, especially if it was cost effective and we didn't have to tie up our training. You know, it's one whole day for the training and then all the stuff that goes into it. Right, yeah. And keeping it up. We have that Y done. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have an idea of who you would reach out to for crushing? I do. There's been one vendor that has talked to me previously about it and was going to put some numbers together, but I haven't heard back yet. And I have I didn't reach out today. And then I was going to reach out to another vendor that does it and then track down another local kind of one. Let's get it. It can't hurt to get quotes. Yeah, it seems yeah. like we're going to have to. Let's do it. Is there any Please opportunity to just stage just some of the material quiet. right in the pet, Jason? Or is it needs to be this time? For the yeah. size of it now, it almost like two years ago. Taking out as they process mm -hmm. some, so they can process what's there. Every, the two different places that I've heard from, they like to come in with a minimum of this many area. You know, one of them is like 10,000. 10, that's, what, that's what Hyde Park does too. And, uh, Local vendor said that they'd be willing to do some other stuff if we wanted. Yeah, I know in the past McCulloch crushing always said minimum 10,000 yards. Okay, let's find out. Let's see. What else you got, Jason? Uh, that's it. Okay. Anyone else have anything for Jason? We'll go later on. You, did you want to move um, the cooler question up nope. now? We have a whole still bunch of here? things. Jason's going to be involved in a bunch of conversations, so nope. <laughs> okay. We will keep it where it is. Um, okay. Next up is plan purchases, municipal building, copier, printer, scanner, and then we'll go on to um, quote from old mediation on the land record book also as a reduced plan purchase. So, copier, printer, scanner. Didn't we authorize Carl at our last board meeting to do that if it was the lowest cost? That was cost? the wide format. The engineer map copier. Oh, that printer. was, yeah, this okay, the not, not the, not the copier. Really okay. Sorry. Small format. Okay, what's the scoop? 
Well, the one in the it was in the office was flooded, and unfortunately, there was a computer component um, mounted low at the back side of that copier and took on water. The vendor came and checked it out and said it's not worth trying to repair it or replace. She just planned to get a new one. So uh, <coughs> Rosemary did uh, acquire a quote which came in shortly before um, she went out and then she called in and asked uh, if I could you know, review it and bring it to your attention. So um, I did um, clarify a couple of questions with SimQuest to be sure I understood what that um, the monthly maintenance fee is and the machine seems to be um, pretty much, well I think it is what we have now except that it's a newer model. Okay. Did she get a second bulb? No, she just got this one from SimQuest, the company we were dealing with. I think you might be going where I was going was, is that a reimbursable expense either under I'm the insurance one in the circle. or FEMA? Which means we have three the quotes. Yeah. For, well, yes and no. For FEMA, yes, but a lot of FEMA references town procurement policy with between five and 10,000 is two quotes. I don't know. I don't, sorry, but I'm not buying it with all of the red tape that comes with FEMA. There's plenty of red tape. There's even so, some tape. I hear your point, Aren't they however... We should check with Ron to make sure, I mean, I, if it's doable, I'm okay doing it, but if it's going to, if it's going to jeopardize the possibility of either FEMA or insurance reimbursement, I'm not in favor of doing it. Yep. Isn't this up in Ron's alley? It is, exactly, yeah. yeah. And luckily... If it is reimbursable by insurance, it's a flood-related topic, which we'll be dealing with next week. I guess that's my thoughts. Is that clear enough, Carl? Mm -hmm. Beauty. I like it. So everyone is supportive of Evan's thoughts? I am mostly <laughs> supportive of these particular I don't know how thoughts. you wouldn't be. Who would spend $7,500 of taxpayers' money irresponsibly? Yeah, if we can get it reimbursed, we should do everything we can to get it reimbursed. I want to keep track of the number of times you just proclaim things in a meeting. You should. And when there's a meeting that you don't just proclaim something, I'm marking it down. You should bring it up. <laughs> I'm going to. Punctuality, yeah. That's how I'm supporting Yeah, I know. Thanks, Mark. That was fashionably late. Okay. Um, right now. Okay, so... You have the follow up on that one, Carl. Um, quote for the mold remediation. Okay, so water remediation. one of the land records book, uh, actually, it's number 14, and you have something on your desk uh, from CoFile. Um, provides that information. And so this book goes way back. Um, Susan told me to um, deeds from the late 1800s. So it's historic. Uh, 1800s, yes, wow. It is. Mark, that's when you bought your history first property. And um, it's, a, it's a bound book, so it's not like the land record books that we would have today that you could open up and take pages out. And um, so they discovered that this particular book that was on the bottom shelf in the vault uh, was not seen when books were taken out of there just before the water came in and moved upstairs. And uh, then what was found, it already had mold on the outside and you could tell that pages were wet. So probably what happened since the book was laying down like this, bottom pages of the book were, were wet. Co-file directed Susan to put it in a plastic bag, seal it, put it in the freezer for several weeks to, to either freeze or halt the, the molding process. And then they um, 
they, the staff, the town clerk staff, got this quote that came in today. It was for $1,351.50, and that's stated on that paper that you have there. So today we had our uh, initial meeting with people from FEMA, with our PDM, the program delivery manager. And Ron asked about this, and the person said, well, it might be a protective measure. Um, but he, he's not had this kind of question posed to him before, so early next week when we meet again, maybe we'll have an answer. Probably Another point of view is that some, something needs to be done with this book because you could view it as priceless. I mean, you're not going to do something to recreate. Oh, so we just can't use our new photo copy. Yeah. Copy it. Well, my actually, I did have that question because it says di uh, digitization specifications, and I wonder if we could get imaging. Well, maybe this is the right time and place. But they do save these, even if you digitize records, they do save the paper, mm -hmm. original yeah. paper yeah. copies. Yeah. I was going to ask actually the same thing uh, whether we could get a, another quote including digitization. So basically, what we're saying is we're going to spend $1,300 because it's a whole book. Whereas if it were one from 1990, we just photocopy. I think the one from 1990 would, we'd probably do the same thing, right? Because it would still, I mean, if we didn't have another record of it somewhere, we would still need to recreate yeah, we just photo 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 copy copy well, versus maybe the uh, best I could say is maybe that if if we did have one of these books where that you could open up and take the pages off the um, spindles inside and run it through the copier and just make a new 1990 book um, whether that would be acceptable or not I don't know because um, those are copies of the documents and the originals go back to the to the owners, I believe. But the, with the this bound book, you just don't have that option. So how long has this book been in the freezer? Well, it was, I came back on the 17th, and it was, I think it was a several days after I came back that, okay. that Susan made it known that they found this book, and so. It's all a month, give or take? About, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Why do you ask? Uh, well, the recommendation was to put it in the freezer for several weeks, and I guess going back to if the guy from FEMA <coughs> said it is a reimbursable expense because of the time measure, no doubt, I would do it right now. I think it's very important. But if no damage can happen in the freezer, and we could get two more quotes by Monday, I would be in the same boat as the printer. I did not hear that it has to be taken out of the freezer and something done with it right now. I, what I heard was that it needs to be in there for a certain amount of time, and then they proceeded with the step. I assumed that when it got wet that it wasn't just about the mold radiation, it was also about making sure the pages came apart and were readable. Yeah, it's about both. Well, do we know it's about both? This says mold <coughs> radiation. There's a mold on the is about Cover. both. The freezing is about killing the mold and making it so that you can pull the pages apart without destroying them. Do you know this for a fact? Yes, I, I, I've learned this recently actually. Okay. <laughs> My understanding is that it actually requires uh, crypto freezing in order to actually kill the mold, which is a lot colder than yeah, like crypto seventy crypto. degrees below zero or something. That is that like just using cryptocurrency? Is it crypto yeah, like or crypto cryo? Currency. I think it's cryo. Cryo. Yeah. 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 There you go. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Crypto is close, though. You know. Um, but you know, it, regardless, I, they are extremely valuable books. Uh, I I wonder. I don't. I don't know too many companies that actually do restoration work it it might be difficult to even find 
I know Sir Crow offers it as a service. And they do. Going to show up and I would imagine that. By next I would imagine that um, museums, like museums, have to connect with places that do this kind of thing too. I would imagine. And, and the FEMA requirement is just that we try to get multiple three quotes. I, if we don't get three, then you know we go with what we got. But yeah, I'm, if you have again, somebody it, respond that saying they can't do it. That counts as a as a quote or an attempt at getting a quote. Right, that's what I've understood at least. So the um, same company is the only one that I, or in its predecessor, were the only ones that I I know of. Um, but it doesn't mean there aren't others. So maybe Susan could put something on the town clerk's listserv, asking other Vermont municipalities what service they have and. And if there are replies to that, then she could reach out to them to see if they do this kind of restoration. Okay. And that there was. Good. But it sounds so, like Ron is asking a question as to whether or not it is a legitimate female. Well, he, he did ask today, and we're. Um, we think we might get an answer when we have our um, site visit next week. Well, if not, it should be a legitimate insurance reimbursement. If we can get them up here. Okay, <coughs> that's true. Um, ready to move on? Carl, you're good? Yeah. Floodplain Zoning Administrative Officer appointment. So I asked Carl if we had any other interested parties, and Carl responded no. And I heard from Paul before the meeting, and Paul uh, Paul Warden before the meeting, and he said that the Planning Commission had met. They hadn't heard of other interested applicants either, and they were nominating and supportive of Scott Myers being our um, AO. So, would we like to appoint Scott? I would move to appoint Scott Meyer as the floodplain administrative officer with the additional caveat that we have Ron Rajensky work with Scott. to make sure that there's a good understanding. You know, Rebecca, we already talked about Rebecca Pfeiffer. Okay, wait, what's um, your motion? Do you want to make your caveat? I'll, I'll, make, it, I'll make them separate. Yeah, I'll yeah, make okay. motions separate. <laughs> um, I would move to appoint Scott Meyer as floodplain zoning uh, administrator. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? Is this a page? It is. We have to decide what that we talked about it in the last meeting a little bit, but we don't think we landed on paying versus not paying, and if so, the amount. There is compensable work uh, associated with the position, which means, you know, some of it he's able to get paid for, um, whether from us or other entities. Can but you just explain why you said that? Are you talking about something that you've, like, That was based read? on... What do you I, mean? I, th I thought that was what he was explained, or what he explained to us oh, oh, last, at the last <coughs> meeting. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Maybe Maybe I it, said it. Yeah. It could be. It was billable. Yeah. I got you. Okay. I'm sorry. I was just not sure if you had looked into something further. Okay, got it. Um. Okay. Mark, do you feel that that needs to be? Well, part of I, a motion? Or? I just um, think if we're appointing somebody to a position that we're going to be paying them, it ought, we probably ought to know some parameters of what we're paying them. Or whether or are we just appointing somebody to this position and they're going to give us a bill every couple months and we're going to pay? Yeah, I'm curious the same. Um, whatever 
they built. Because I think that the uh, actual ordinance um, specifies the responsibilities. And I believe it specifies when the work is compensable as well. I would have to. That was what I was getting at. Earlier. When the work is compensable, um, when when it can be billed to the town. I'll have to find the. the our ordinance says that. The floodplain administrator position. It, it, I think this was in the. Um, the ordinance that was passed, yes. Uh, the ordinance that was passed long before, <laughs> before I was born. But I'm not going to find it in my email right now. Yeah. We could do it as a separate motion. We could get this motion closed and then Duncan can get his caveat out. <laughs> uh, we can. So do are we do we want to continue discussing or do we want to vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. What was the caveat separate motion, Duncan? Well, I think Mark raises a good point as to whether or not it should be a paid position. And like I stated at the last board meeting, I think it should be. Um, my my original caveat was that that Scott have available at least Ron Rajensky for consultation. Um, you know, research. I mean, Scott talked last time about being able to reach out to Howard Romero and. You know, honestly, I think Ron would be a better source of information. Um, I'm working with, with Rebecca, too, you were saying. And Rebecca Pfeiffer, yeah. Um, this says that the duties and responsibilities of the administrative officer shall main, uh, the administrative officer shall maintain a record of one, all permits issued for development in areas of special flood hazard, two, the elevation in relation to mean sea level of the lowest floor, including basement, of all new or substantially improved buildings. Three, the elevation in relation to mean sea level to which the buildings have been flood proofed. Four, all flood proofing certifications required under this regulation. Five, all variance actions, including justification for their issuance. I'm going to talk about variances. So it doesn't, it doesn't, I, I took a see, quick read, it doesn't look like it about pay. says anything about compensation. I agree. I'm trying to figure out where I read that, but I will probably send it in an email. Could we take up? Um, yeah, that's the end of it. So nothing about pay. Could we take up a motion in a week on compensation, or do we want to just make a motion for Sure. We can, uh, it's up to you, whatever you want to make a motion for. What do you think, Mark? A week. You want to wait a week? I think we should wait a week to get, dig in a little bit more. Okay. We should probably know what others do, <coughs> actually. Are you commendable to making a motion on compensation for the zone, zoning administrator one week from today? Mm -hmm. We could always retroactively pay it if he puts hours in this week. Yeah. 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 I, I guess it would be useful to know if we could find out from Ron if there is any sort of baseline information for FEMA reimbursement. You know, is there a reasonable a reasonable hourly rate or something that um, we yeah. should anticipate? Yeah, it'd be a more informed decision if that's the case. You good with that, Shane? Yeah. You know, and I, I agree. If if he does put in hours this week, that I think that should be 
reimbursable, retroactively reimbursable. Yeah, yeah, as long as he keeps track of his hours, that should be pretty easily doable. No. Okay. So I don't see, Duncan, where we have to make, do you feel like we have to uh, make another motion to allow Ron to work with him? Is that like broadening Ron's work scope? Well, I mean, we hired Ron specifically to deal with FEMA-related issues. This is a floodplain-related issue, so I think if, if everybody's comfortable with, you know, I, I guess what I don't want to have happen is Ron submit a bill that says that he worked with Scott Meyer for three hours and have this board say, well, I, we didn't ask him to do that. So if everybody's comfortable with the concept of you know, having that be part of his general uh, responsibilities, I'm fine with it. I'm comfortable. Fine with me. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Are you peaceful? <laughs> um, only Mark. Okay. I like it. So we'll pick this one back up next. <laughs> okay. uh, I, do you really think it's going to turn out with the unlimited hours? No, I don't think so. I think, we, I think 10 or 12 hours would be plenty. <laughs> Now that that's on the public record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, presentation by Proposed Business THC Sisters. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Tammy Sykes, and this is my sister Cheyenne Madden. Hello. We are THC Sisters, uh, hoping to and open a cannabis <coughs> retail store on Lower Main Street. Um, we're here to answer any questions you might have. Oh, I'm not ready to answer questions. <laughs> I just, we wanted to meet you, let you meet us, um, let you know how we are with this, the Cannabis Control Board as far as our license goes. We're in the queue. Um, right now we're just waiting for the inspection. Okay. Um, so that's where we are there. But we didn't know if you might have any questions for us. When you say you're in the queue, sorry I'm not familiar like well, I know the process from a high level but I don't know what it means to be in a queue okay, like so us being in the queue means that we have submitted all of the paperwork filled out all of the forms that are required and needed by them and it, it, we're just waiting what they do is review each applicant person. so when you're in the queue you know like every time they approve a license we move up in the queue Yep. Yep. So okay. that's, that's what we're in the queue. Everything we they've accepted all of our paperwork, and we're just waiting for the inspection. Okay. Um, and you, you don't have a timeline for your inspection at this point. They haven't let us know yet. And it probably would have been done by now, but we were funny. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. okay. Us as well. I mean, here in Johnson, we're affected. Um, put us back. You know, quite a ways, but yeah. Sorry, flooding is hurt. We're sorry, everybody. but we're fortunate compared to what others are doing. So. Yeah. I was going to ask you: Were you um, were you aware of slash Were you able to take advantage of the Small Business Administration loans um, for any damage <coughs> property or anything in there? Or? Well, I mean, it's a leased property. Mm -hmm. We said right. so. As far as like the building itself, that that's not really our worry. I mean, we just make sure that, you know, there's no You didn't have anything in there that we, was damaged? Um, we, we did have a few things, but not not anything that is comparable to anything somebody else is going through right now. So okay. we didn't feel that was necessarily what we needed to do. Okay. I mean, Fair we had just our cabinets for our products to be stored in and that type of stuff. We did donate towards the restoration of the building and we're happy to donate 10 grand to cover things that FEMA's not going to cover for the town. Um, so if you guys would like to use that, just contact us. That's very kind. That's Thank very you. Kind, yeah. And our phone number is right there on the sign. Okay. okay. Um, two questions. None. Do you have questions? You're welcome. Well. It seems to me that there's not a lot that this board, there's not much of a role to play. Yeah, um, <coughs> what Duncan is referring to is we have this 
well, not so great um, situation that the board is in where we're asked to approve things. When, when your process goes through the state and you get approved through the state, it then comes to the town for approval. But um, without zoning or other regulations in place, the town, we basically don't have any I don't think we have the authority ability to deny or authority, authority to deny anything, frankly, or it even is, ask for any, conditions. or even ask for any conditions so, uh, of a permit. This is my husband, Michael Hatton, and he's kind of helping us through the process because he's familiar with it. Um, are they going to write us a letter? Yeah, we don't have I've to. We've been through the whole yeah. process before, and uh, to get to where we are. Uh, with the license even, we needed a letter from the town manager stating that the town approved cannabis retail and you were aware of our intentions. So we submitted the letter and that's what we needed for the, to get started. And as far as what we need from you guys at the end, just like Derby, because I went through this in Derby, is, uh, we were all done and ready and CCB just wanted your blessing, basically. So it's like just a little blurb on a paper, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and you're aware. Again. I mean, it's our all, stores it's all all that we have to put a stamp it? made of rubber on. And no, I think the yeah, thing is that, good. okay, well, the reality of all of this is that we do have to give our, we do have to give our blessing, and we have no choice other than to give a blessing to anyone well, well, who applies. Just, just, we've, asked a lot of questions about the whole process so I would love to answer any yeah. right now if you have questions like I said I oh we've got we have worked with the state directly on our questions <coughs> from the town perspective not from the business perspective more like uh, what authority do we have as a town entity and the response is always if you don't have zoning you don't have authority to make any decisions right. um, so we, we literally can't deny or put conditions on anyone who presents anything to us. So regardless of what's being presented, it, the it state would still is like the, to be a friend to the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I understand and if, appreciate that. We'll, we'll be very discreet. Like we're not gonna have no. pot leaves in the window or there's not a pot leaf on our logo. Um, there's not gonna be anything that kids are really gonna be able to look in and see. We've spoke with the people next door at the coffee shop, mm -hmm. um, because if they really didn't want us there, then we, we wouldn't there. have we opened wouldn't there. there. Yeah, and we really do want to be community players and help the community. So if there's anything that you guys would like to see or need, come talk to us. I appreciate that. That's very like I really do appreciate that, and I think the board whole, as a whole appreciates that. Um, we're not frustrated with you. We're frustrated with the state no, process. No, I understand that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. Well, I yeah. Go ahead. Do you acquire local, locally grown product? Yeah, I mean we do. Yeah, we've hired like local. We've hired local people to work in our store. Um, yeah, we can only purchase cannabis from Vermont. Any product has to be grown has to be from in Vermont. Vermont. So it really does help out the, the community as far as jobs, and then it helps out the state as a whole. Nice. Well, that's yeah, we've hired, we have five, five no. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, four. Two, two people that are from Jones. And then okay. two yeah. are relocating. And then Jones. two are also <laughs> relocating. They're relocating. <laughs> the yeah. world, where in the world are they going? They're going to be renting in, uh, that uh, in that building. Oh, yeah. uh, oh. Yeah. So, I mean, technically, there'll be four locals working at our store, and there's only six of us. Yeah. Right. So, and you know, we do we do want to be a part of the community. That's that's huge. That's huge. I mean, we do and know the business that we're getting into as well, so we know that there's <laughs> that, but. You know, there's there's people have questions, people have preconceptions, mm -hmm. and um, so are you two? You said you opened a derby, also. Are you two? Did. You did, but you this two is, are. This, this is, is new this is for us. you. This okay. is He's us. just helping us along the process because I got it. He's your unpaid consultant. <laughs> it, it's there's there's a lot involved. Yeah, yes. I've been doing this for months and months. So and it's months. kind of nice to have somebody that you can just say, hey, 
<laughs> it, is, it is just a business, really. I mean, my wife and I don't even indulge in cannabis use. Yeah. But uh, we, we do see the benefits of it for people and uh, the, the fact that it is safe because it's tested and uh, registered with the state you know, it is huge. It's uh, in Derby alone, the overdose uh, Rates, percentage yeah. is, is way down. And mm -hmm. uh, they say it's due to that. And crime is down a little bit as well, I guess. You know, it's, it's on a town-to-town -town basis, I'm sure, but yeah. it, is, it is a good thing for the community. And as far as like local uh, growers and, and people like that, yes, I'm completely open to that. And I, I have talked with a few people already, and they're going to come and see me after the store opens. Oh, good. Okay. So that would help. That would also help the town. Yeah. Is the is the people in this town and the surrounding that are you know growers. Yeah. And yeah. Have um, I appreciate you guys being proactive, being here before you're asking for anything from us. Um, my one question is, have you uh, put any thought into parking at all? Uh, it's obviously a pretty busy area and there's already kind of a shortage of parking at peak hours. So I just didn't know if that well, was something you're thinking about. And that's a valid concern and, and we did. There is parking in the back mm -hmm. of the building um, and there's also parking across the street. We only have the one handicapped parking space in front of the store. But people could pull up there um, in that particular location without being on the sidewalk. People can actually pull up on the sidewalk. And it will, that um, will hold two cars right there. And that holds two and cars. And it's not like a convenience store or something like that. I mean, you're going to have a couple of customers at a time, two or three, and then it's they're in and out. They usually pretty much know what they want. Like, yeah. Um, that's, so, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a restriction on the number of people you can have in the store at any given time, right? So... Yes, there is. Fire that's Marshall the, puts a number on that. Is it, okay, is it Fire Marshall? I thought there was something... Fire Marshall. Okay, for some reason I thought I there was something... I haven't heard of anything in the licensing part of it that states you can only have five or ten people in, but we do only allow so many people in at a time just it's for safety fire. purposes for our staff. and. People can't get in, I mean, they can come in the door, but if they they don't have a proper ID, they turn. We have a scanner that like, really goes through it, can detect a fake ID, and, you know, so, I mean, the process of getting in is pretty safe. Yeah. Like, we're not going to have underage kids right. fooling us. And this is Johnson, not Burlington. Not, there's not going to be lines of people trying no. to get in. And maybe the first week or so, <laughs> but after that, it's going to just calm down. It'll calm down. I... Hope and don't hope you're right, because I hope you have a successful business. Uh, I, as someone who wants to see you succeed, I am a little worried about the parking and the traffic situation there. Um, so, you know, just as if, if there is anything that you can do on that on that front, um, one thing maybe is is talking to some nearby landowners to talk, say, hey, can we have people park there? Um, we do have the fire alarm going off. So. I'm just gonna call security. Okay. Jeez, oh bro, it's Can you go to the next? I just want to make sure that we're not supposed to be leaving. But no, I, you know, appreciate you no, being proactive. I and and have them on speed. Yeah. I thought about that. And like I said, there is parking in the rear. And it is a business where you can repeat customers. So, you know, we can let them know that. And I'm friendly with the landlord that just purchased the buildings across the street, the street too. So okay. yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't have a problem. And, and we also want to do like an online order type thing where people would just order it online. And then pick up and, the and then just pick it's up. Ready when yeah. They get there. yeah, so it, it was, would lessen the time there. You know, yeah. you probably take that way down. The time. So. Sounds like you're thinking about it. It's just something that's been brought to my attention, so I wanted to bring it to yours. Yeah, well, yeah that was the one thing. <clears throat> yeah, that was, this, yeah, that was the one thing that I didn't really care for. But. And hey, I'd love to build a parking lot downtown, but I don't know if uh, I'll get everyone on board for that. <laughs> Big aspirations. You just said that in a public forum. I've said it in other public forums, yeah. <laughs> I think we need more parking downtown. That's right. That's right. 
Yeah, we're running on. Just don't let your don't let your employees park in front of your business. No, no, no they won't. No, no, that's no. all that matters. Always drives me crazy when people employees park right in front of the business. Yeah, and then the people <coughs> that are supporting the business has to walk a mile of that. Very good. I Thank guess you. we'll see your application soon. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll come back to the select board after the license is done. Yeah, I'll give you. You I'll can you come now. back, or you, or we can. We'll just bring it up at a public meeting, and you can be here or not. It's up to you. Um, yeah. Up to you. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Stuff over at me. The next item. The next item is the tractor parade. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. My son it. loves the tractor parade. I bet. Oh, oh man. He Has he even seen it yet? Hold the seat. He never. He didn't see it last. <laughs> By his son, he means um, child in him. <laughs> okay, so the tractor parade is coming up again. Do we even need to approve it? Yeah, we should just yes. approve it. Motion to approve. A uh, second from Duncan, the tractor parade. All those in favor? Do you want to say anything about when and where it is? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Have you Details, read the report for the last six months? <laughs> September, <laughs> Saturday, September. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's Saturday, September 16th. At? At, what, 11? Uh, 10. 10. 10. Starting. 10 a.m. Yeah. Before we move to approve, I mean, before we... Actually, take Vote. formal motion. Can mm -hmm. we have discussion? No. Yeah, go for it. Do you want to say where the parade is? In the uh, well, the parade is going to start at Manchester Lumber, proceed along Railroad Street, uh, go a short distance on Main Street, go down Pearl Street, and end at Legion Field. So my question is the the piece of just the just the Route 15 piece. Um, we don't have jurisdiction over 15. Gonna ask if Carl's okay with notifying the state or the requesting. Well, technically, they're supposed to get a parade permit from VTrans for anything that's on Route 15. Um, I can notify Stephen Stanley and see what happened last year. Nothing. The last, the last two years. I'm sure they didn't do anything. Uh, but technically, they're supposed to do that, and in reality, they should. There should be some sort of traffic control. I was going to say, last two years, Tom contacted L, uh, I don't want to say LCOEC, the <laughs> Sheriff's Department, um, and they did traffic control without a qualm at all. He mentioned that to me when he came in to ask and said that there would be three deputies there for traffic. So he's already got a plan. Okay. Uh, so those are all friendly friends. amendments. Of the whole discussion. The road name. The entire and discussion. <laughs> the time and it's not it doesn't need to be just a discussion. It's fine. Okay, deal. Um all those in favor? Aye. 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 You really sucked the phone out of that one, don't you? <laughs> Donna, thank you for Well, I think that you know the important part of the discussion is there should be some sort of traffic control on fifteen. Yeah. We're still on time. I think there always is though. Um, oven committee resignation uh, from Luke. Motion to accept Jennifer Burton's resignation from the community oven committee and send her a thank you card. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think Aye. Jen just likes our thank you cards. She must. She's got what? Um, three of them this year. Do, so the other question is do we want to post for more applicants? I would rather just ask the oven committee if they want. Yeah, one. that's what I would do. Okay. Just ask them because you know, I don't, I don't think there's any um, num specified number of people on right. the oven committee or anything like that. So this is. I assume Luke right. would have told us if they had somebody else too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Jen has Jen has certainly been very active from the outset in that. So. Yeah, she was the Special thanks. Jen and I well, would be warranted, I think. A big thank you card. A big thank you card. A special thank you card. Well, we have a box of thank yous, so she'll get one of those. She came to the select board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was on vacation. It persuaded the select to let us do it. 
Okay. Um, the uh, these are in different order. How come? What am I missing? Oh, I, I my sorry, just my total error. Nobody else's. Consider the Johnson Elementary School cooler and their road right of way. Are there any concerns from the highway department? The only thing that I would like to add to this is that I think we should just get a um, some sort of a note from the school saying that they um, remove the town from responsibility if said cooler sus uh, sustains any damage from snow removal, salt, that kind of thing, given the given that it's in the right of way and it's probably very expensive. I like that idea. Yeah. So I'm a little unclear on how much of it is actually going to protrude into the right of way. Well, here. <laughs> <Jason>. Thank you. <laughs> it's about a foot and a half. About a foot and a half? Yeah, it's a foot and a half. So it's, it's 24 and 9 I measured out. So it's in you know, 22, 23 feet. The chip building up top where they dump the chips is more in the right of way. But Beth had a great point when she called and talked to me about it because they know as the school and the contractor also pointed out to them for the height of the cooler to get under their roof line they had to recess it two and a half inches below grade so everybody is concerned about the water pulling up in the uh, cooler floor so the salt corrosion thing is a, is a real issue it gets, there's a good amount of salt that not only we use over there they use their own salt. They salt the parking lot. We just do the road through, but they use a pretty substantial amount of salt. Enough where during the day, Mark doesn't have to really go apply anything. Only at you know first thing. So that would That's probably. I mean, I don't want to get in the way of them putting the cooler in in any way. I just want to make sure that we're like down five years down the road, yeah. we're not dealing with an issue that doesn't need to be a town issue. Yeah, agreed. So. I'm going to have a motion to grant Johnson Elementary School a right of, did they fill out a right-of-way permit? Yeah, they're working on the right-of-way permit they filled out and they completed the work. And so a variance to build their, construct their cooler uh, partially on the town right-of-way and notifying them the town's not responsible, liable, or in any other way accountable for any damage to the cooler because it's installed in the right away. Is that good enough? Sure. I mean, we already issued the permit. That's the thing. But they're right? asking for a variance. There. When we, as me, issued the permit when they were talking about relocating this water runoff, they did not do anything about the water runoff channel that comes down around the building. So it's shooting for the cooler. Okay. They didn't have money enough to put the drainage across the parking lot that we talked about. Okay. They got a grant for the whole project. It was a, they didn't have enough to do the that part. So I just want to make sure that whatever we do, like when it comes to the permitting and the variance and all of that, whatever we do, we're clear about lack of liability and the school is, is accepting that in some manner. Do you feel that you still have the ability to put this in as a condition of the permit? I think if we had <clears throat> something typed up that uh, Dylan would be more than happy to probably sign it, I would say. It is the permit that we use for the right of way for what they were doing is a pretty vague permit. There's really nothing in there that uh, goes in detail about. Usually we don't let people do this in the right of way. Well, Carl, in your report, you pretty much got the basis for a, a condition. You think you can give that to Jason? Or? Yeah, yeah, I can share that. Stated condition that the town is not responsible for damage to or corrosion on the cooler. I should have just read that. Was that your motion? I, I read it, I said something different than what Carl had written, but it's the same. So what do you want the exact wording to be? I motion to accept the cooler 
partially occupying the road right away uh, to authorize the road right away access permit to the Moyle North Modified Unified School District with a state <laughs> stated condition that the town will not be responsible for damage to or corrosion of the cooler. And I will second it. <clears throat> Carl should just read what you write a lot more often. True. Uh, Maybe I should just not come to this. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 I almost forgot to vote. Okay. Um, <clears throat> consider approving the new name for private Consider approving name for a new <coughs> private road. Also in the description, it talks about the North Highland Drive, which passes from the existing West Highland to Route 15. What if we go to Route 15? That will connect to Route 15. It already does. It's just not a People already drive back there. It just doesn't uh, technically. So, gotcha. oddball question about the policy, Duncan. Being that this doesn't actually attach to a town highway right away, does the Historic Society need to weigh in on this? <laughs> Look at the faces around the table. Even Jason's over there smiling. <laughs> It's a good question. <laughs> that is a good, a good question. question. Um, Only Duncan can answer it. And I don't have a copy of the policy directly in front of me. Um, it's a good thing for internet. That's all I have to say. I've got not logged into it. That's why. They're meeting this. No, they're meeting not for a couple of weeks. One other question that I would have, not to defer your question, but we are also supposed to check with the post office to make sure there's not a conflict in mail delivery um, road names. I doubt very much that there is, but I think we're supposed to submit. Sounds like a stall tactic. A proposed Sorry, road but. name to the post <laughs> office. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> So oh, in, yeah. in, in the zoning, it seems like they should be able to do whatever they want. I like where you're well, e saying. except that it is a 911 address, and there probably won't be mail delivery. But what you need, what you need to make sure of, is that there isn't a road name of a similar name somewhere within the emergency service. You don't want the emergency service provider sending somebody who's having a heart attack to an address that already exists, right, like Overhill or Ben Over. Right. Which we have two roads. <laughs> well, Overhill and Overhill. And they're very confusing. I still get confused. <laughs> Thank God. So is a Johnson post office serve any territory outside of the town of Johnson? Yeah, some in Waterville and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not a lot. Well, and Eden is of the same zip code. Um, oh. Or all the same area code. Zip code. Zip code. I said area. I know. Um, we were ignoring that. Okay, so we want to check on that, and otherwise we are okay with the name. Can we just make a contingent motion and get this off our I'm list? waiting for Mark to do so. I'll make a motion to approve the name North Highland Drive, contingent on no conflicts with the postal system, E911 addresses, or if we find that there is a need for historical society to do. It's not in the ordinance because the board specifically It's not, okay, get that last part then. Well, get the last part. But wait a minute, let me finish. It is, it, it, is, it was an adopted policy of the board right. to do that. They yeah. specifically declined, wow. including it in the ordinance, to have the Historical Society review. I can't find it. Road name. It's not in there. You won't find it. But it's but it's an adopted policy. Brian didn't have it in there. Yeah. Brian didn't have it in there. See, no, that I was like, years ago. I like that motion. I'm going to second it. Okay. Thanks, and what Evan. Was the motion? Any further discussion? It was <laughs> approving the name contingent upon 
making sure there was no E911 conflicts, postal conflicts, and the Historic Society was okay with it. Did someone second I just don't it? want it to come back. I seconded. Part, and there's a second. I agree. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We need a road name. Okay. Um, building assessment priority list. So this is back about um, when LCPC was here and talking about the efficiency uh, items and Carl suggests that we should reassess this given the flood situation. And Carl, is there a reason around timing? Can you remind us if this is coming up? Well, oh, um, Victoria asked a question about whether you wanted to change your priority list for order because of the flood. And the application period, as I understand it, started July 1st and runs through late January of 24, but and applications are accepted on a rolling basis. I understand that to mean that BGS is reviewing applications as they arrive there at their office. Okay, so Victoria, we'd just like to get started. And it um, also probably implies that at some point money will run out? It, yeah, I suppose that it could. I can't imagine that there's a Limitless, limited or limitless number of dollars for these assessments, but it seemed like when I'm reading the minutes from back in May that there was a lot of money though in this program. It's like half a million, wasn't it? it was several million. I would propose that we change the order to town garage followed by historical society. Basically, take the municipal building and put it down the list, down to the bottom. Library and historic and municipal building just dropped actually for now. I don't know that we're in a position in either of those buildings to go through a grant process, but what do you guys think? So you're just saying take two and run it to seven? I'm saying just take the municipal building and library off the list for now. We're going to have our hands full with those two. Do anyway. we keep lower storage on here? Uh, yep, keep town garage, historical, lower storage, and old mill. Yeah. Basically, the, the properties that didn't flood. Right. Lower storage did. Wait, lower, yeah. Oh, lower storage oh, sorry. Did. We should take, yep, yeah, you're right. Lower yeah. storage come up too. So maybe we just reduce it to three. We're not going to get three anyway. Yeah. That much seemed very They clear. guaranteed one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, town garage stays number, number one. one it's number one, Jason. So that's my proposal. And what's your, what's your rationale to, to remove the buildings that were flooded? Because um, I feel like we uh, looking, well, two things. One is that I feel like our insurance is probably going to cover a good chunk of the repair work we have. And are we going to be in a position that we want to undertake additional work? I don't know the answer to that. But maybe that's not good rationale. Happy to be challenged. My additional rationale to that would be, I, I don't know that it would be an accurate assessment of, you know, of what they're trying to assess here. If, I mean, there's some of them where the insulation's been ripped out, you know, it's... That's a huge energy. <laughs> it would make a difference. Uh, but that'll be covered. I'd be more comfortable with pushing them to the bottom and cutting them off. Okay. Yeah, I think I could argue that it doesn't really matter whether the buildings were flooded or not. What they'd be assessing is whether or not there's an opportunity to increase the energy efficiency of the building. And if if we're making decisions right now on what to replace and how to replace it, that that could actually be good information to have. Mm -hmm. But our guess is we don't know if we're going to get more than one audit. Building. If we're only going to get one building. Well, n n nobody's, they've, they've guaranteed that they will do one building. They will also likely be here for a set amount of time. If my recollection of the discussion is correct, they would do as many buildings as they could within the specified period of time they're going to be here. So, it's so are you arguing for bumping the library back up? 
No, I'm 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 worried about removing the municipal, municipal building. building at all from the because I think we're going to need to make some decisions soon about the municipal building and would that maybe it's maybe the timing it's like most things timing is probably not good um, you know we're probably not going to get this energy assessment done before we need to take action to get the building back in some sort of usable order. Well, the only thing that it, the energy assessment may help us with is um, heating and cooling. I mean, you're just going to re insulate. They're not going to change your mind about that. No. But they may say. If, if we had $600,000 to put into that building to change the insulation or the windows or some other aspect of it, we wouldn't even consider it. That's the purpose of the yes. grant, is, That's what grant is to apply <laughs> for up to $600,000 for energy efficiency improvements. It's an outright grant. It's not, you got to pay it back. It's what, you want to argue? You look like you want to argue right now. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> Mark wants to be here for longer time. Okay. Right. So, so are you saying keep it the same? Are you okay with reporting? Yeah, is that what you're suggesting? I'm, I'm suggesting keep it the same. Okay. I'm happy with that. I mean, honestly, I care mostly that the town garage gets mm -hmm. assessed. Yeah. Me too. Jason too. It's, a, it is a, it's not um, about Jason. It's a money to get. That much. Uh, okay. We should get the trail. So keeping it the same. Got it. There was one other question uh, along with that order. Um, Victoria was asking if you want just to have the level one assessments done, and in our, her and my correspondence today, we think that that would be the best option, considering what you were bringing up before, just everything that's going on. Uh, the level two assessments requires more pre-assessment work by the town <clears> to <throat> get ready for it. Then they come here and they have to do the blow test on the doors, whatever, so that's going to impact operations a little bit more. Uh, and there's an opportunity perhaps for that later. Uh, you do a blower test on the municipal building in its current right. situation anyway. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, we just thought it'd be yeah. just, it'd be just level one. Leave, leave it at level one. That's what we Can have, we choose that's what we have indicated, different buildings? And would, would we want to? Like, is, is there something that would be good? Is there a reason? I don't understand why they offer different levels, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't understand why it's even an option if they're doing an initial assessment. Maybe because some building owners would want to know that um, for certain actions they might want to take. There was, and I, I don't just, I don't know, yeah, I'm just guessing. Yeah, yeah. I, there was a discussion when Victoria was there about the difference between level one and level two, and I think it had to do with, more had to do with the application process for the money. I felt like it unlocked more options if you did the higher level, but mm -hmm. I'm just speculating at this point. I do remember talking about it. I just don't remember yeah. the content. I don't remember, I don't remember the details either. But there was a difference between, yeah. if you did a level two, I think it puts you a little higher up the queue. Right, I felt like it was funding. something like that too. Yeah. yeah. But I don't remember the specifics of it. I mean, yeah. And honestly, she didn't know a lot of, de you know, there weren't a lot of details. That was pretty early on after the announcement of the, even the grant program. She maybe, maybe knows more about it now than she did when she attended our board meeting, too. Because I don't remember her talking about additional steps the town would have to take in order to facilitate that level two assessment. Yeah. 
Well, I remember we did have to do more in terms of reporting, and we had to be available for like walking through and answering questions, if I remember correctly, that kind of a thing. But I do have a document um, from BGS, I think, yeah, that uh, goes through kind of the pros and cons of both. It says for pros of level one, shorter duration, no documents required, cons, no blower door testing, not applicable for future loans. And then for level two, it says pros, enhanced savings calculations, blower door tests included, applicable for loans, cons, longer duration, not additional loans. documentation required. Okay, we're not worried about the loan side of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the specifics, at least for documentation for level two, is this audit requires the town to provide five years of monthly electrical and heating fuel use information, building architectural, mechanical, and electrical drawings. Which we don't have for the, you know, for the garage. We could do the first, but not the latter. Okay. Um, I'm good with the first. Level one. Level one is, yeah. Okay. Uh, discuss debris, fl uh, flood debris pickup and possible collection. So we got a state, Evan, do you want to speak to this one? We got the state email. Oh, the email that came in today. Oh, not today, no, last week. It's not in the packet, is it? No, but the content is in the packet at number 12. The email itself is sympathetic, but these were the options uh, the state provided. So the options that the state provides is making a public role off available. Oh, those no, are just no, no, the those are just the, that. Those are just the oh, town's sorry. options. <laughs> the, the town's options. Sorry, it's the, the state. town could do that. Okay. Or placing multiple roll offs. Um, do another roadside collection day. We could do the road crew on demand. The state offers pickup. The state that offered to help with arranging if people needed help getting to. They, the state basically asked what level of support we needed for debris removal and suggested that <coughs> if they were to get involved, they would prefer to make it a one big run through and then be done. They didn't say they had to do that, but that would that's what they would prefer. I don't know that we have enough properties in that type of a state with people who no sorry, long word, in that situation with people who could got quickly enough to keep up with what the state could provide from the sounds of it to me. Somehow today, Stephen Young from the state emailed asking if Johnson still requires the re removal assistance. Mm -hmm. The state currently has 20 West Highland Drive and 20 East Highland Drives as properties that have debris. I'm not sure where they got that list from. But he's asking if there's others that are known addresses. I and I did follow up with him them. about that because those are private roads and this he replied and asked if they're gated or if the public can drive on them and I told him if they're not gated and the public can drive on them and there are no signs there to state that they're private and it sounds like they're okay with picking up on those private roads and he also indicated that if there's not a lot of debris that they might send AOT trucks and I know in one other community that's what they were doing instead of having that contractor go all around with the cherry picker and big boxes to pick stuff up they were just sending the AOT dump trucks out and I think in that case also the town had to provide the front end loader to help them and that's in the situations where there was not a lot of debris to be picked up 
My question is, is there a lot to be picked up still? Well, as I wrote in your, your notes, after last Tuesday's town pickup, then somebody called in and asked if the town's doing any more because they were doing work and it happened to be on Railroad Street. And then somehow Mr. Young has found out that there's need at East and West Highland. I don't know how that who reported there, that on us. Is there a need down there? Have you been down there? There wasn't as of last Wednesday or Thursday when after we get picked up every, everything Tuesday and we went back down to see and pretty much everything's been gutted. There's a few places that kept like they stripped some places, and there's a couple people that wanted some of the stuff that was out for, so they put it in front of their place for their shed or something. So there's some stuff like that, but we can do a weekly pickup. So that it seems like we don't need to call the stadium for this. Say there's only a few places that I know of that are still actively cutting, and they told me that they would be doing that for another probably month. Know. One of those properties, yeah, anyway. Yeah. I think there's a few properties. I think there are some properties that we are not just not connected with, and I only know from a personal connection that I have with somebody directly, who I would not have talked to with if they were not a personal connection, who is cleaning their place out themselves, and they were flooded on the first floor. So I think that there are still properties out there that are still doing that first floor gutting, unfortunately. Um, I know it's pretty bad, not good. Um, some we know about. And then the trailer park, I agree, like the trailer park, I go down and I think, okay, it looks cleaned up. Like there's no stuff outside of the units themselves but there's still units that are like partially torn out and not fully torn out. And then I go back a week later and I'm like, and I think like, where did this stuff come from? Because I thought when I came back here last time, it was, but it's clearly flood debris. Like when you see the stuff outside, it is clear it came from flood damage. So I think that there's probably some mental health reasons. I think there's probably some capacity reasons and reasons that we may never understand, but people are definitely still cleaning. I think some of the folks who owned those trailers may not, you know, that might have been all they had, and they might be somewhere else right now, you know. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Some right. of them are still there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that I happened to get my teeth cleaned today. I love my dentist and Jeff, by the way, if you need a dentist. <laughs> Dr. Cruz is the place to go. Um, but I was driving down through Cambridge Village and they had a sign out saying that flood debris is no longer being picked up as of August 5th, which I thought was interesting because I still think that we are responsible for debris cleanup if it's in our right away, right? Do we have this ongoing responsibility? Well, it has to end sometime. Why? What makes you think that? For the same reason that we were responsible initially. It was just not ending. Like, start throwing my debris out the road right away. I mean, that is not the same thing. I understand that. struggling to get their debris removed. I understand that it's not. I'm just saying, when's the end date? I don't know. If it's never ending, I might be really interested in the state coming by once a week to do a pickup. If the highway department thinks they have it under control and they don't want the state here, because if we really do have to supply the loader, we're kind of at the state's whims as far as scheduling. is like the hurdle there for me. Um, we do save time in trucking it. And the load fees, which I don't know what those are going at per load. Well, am I wrong in thinking that even if the state picks it up and they dispose of it at the transfer station or Casella's that we're going to receive a bill for for the tipping fee or, are they, or is the state picking up that cost? Well, my understanding was that 
when the state is paying the bill and then seeking the FEMA reimbursement, when they're using that, that contractor, a company out of Florida that the state had a contract with pre-flood to come in and do this. Now, they obviously, this company's not doing everything themselves. I'm sure they're subcontracting with some people here in Vermont, or businesses in Vermont, but that, that was a state um, service that was being provided. So the town would not be getting a bill? It was my typically? understanding for those situations where, the, where that big a level of service, not just the, the, the um, highway, or the AOT dump trucks going around. But I don't know why that would be any different. I mean, they're doing that to reduce cost for FEMA. But we're getting billed if we're dumping it. If we don't, if we're not utilizing state resources, then then it's on the, the town. town. Is the and the yeah. town seeking reimbursement. And then the town has is then has to try to justify that to FEMA that you know that this is flood related debris. You can document that somehow. Can I make two suggestions? Yeah. I was thinking about it this week because the dumpster thing is kind of a headache for anybody that's trying to monitor it and make it fair because some people tell people it's not their dumpster and some people that are don't even live in the foot of the areas take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So I would I would suggest that we get rid of the dumpsters and we announce we'll do a weekly pickup once a week until October 1st or something like that and, or November 1st. but. Because right now, they're, everything's getting put in dumpsters and random stuff. That are, they don't, you know, when it's at, on a road and no one's there, they don't sort anything. Right. When we pick it up, we sort it and we do the traffic control and everything like that all in once. That's why I think it'd be nicer for us to do it so we didn't have to mix entities. So traffic control and everything comes down to us. So it can get controlled by in the house. So there's no questions because different entities work different traffic control and stuff. Are you allowing your time specific to flood or as of, debris? As of when we had talked now, yes. Yeah, okay. Because there was some stuff that, like when we were all doing the dumpsters, it's kind of hard to, for that first week and a half, I was taking pictures, but there's no way to take accurate. Everybody, well, whoever was down there was seeing everything was just getting dumped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm okay with a weekly pickup if you tell us where to go. I like that, and I like that there is uh, the end date the that Evan was asking market. for. I think it kind of says to people we're going to do it until then, and you know, if you can get your debris out before then, then we'll help you. But you know, hopefully, uh, push the people who need a little push to get it done. You wouldn't have to tie up the dumpster if we were paying. You know, that's getting paid for. <laughs> I would nominate Duncan to monitor the dumps. Yes, I can. So October 1st being the the last. He's retired. What is October 1st? He did such a good job. October 1st is a Sunday, so October. I like that. Actually, yes. Yeah, October October 1st being the last day to put the debris in right of the, the right of way. So. Uh, or sooner. I think I'm confused because at one point in time I thought that we had discussed, and maybe it wasn't a motion, but I thought we had discussed after the big cleanup where we ran around with the dump with the uh, compactor trucks that there was going to be a notice put out saying no more trash in the right of way, we're done. That apparently never got done, and maybe it was never a board decision, but. Why am I thinking that was what we were going to do? I remember there being a firm decision that we were going to cut it off like that. And I know for me personally, as long as there's still flood debris out there that needs to be taken care of, we should be doing our part to encourage it. I'll, I'll look back at the minutes when I get a sec, but from what I remember, uh, we did 
set an end date and say that we would assess needs, and it may change. Uh, and I believe the end peak was met, and there was obviously still a need from our standpoint. Um, so we had a dumpster on River Road West, I believe, and then Jason was reporting uh, maybe it was two weeks ago, maybe it was a week ago, or something, water debris, or somebody else, maybe it wasn't even Jason, a water debris in. It was me. The mobile home park. That was me. Yeah, I had a dumpster put down there because at the time. Right. We didn't know if it was going to be covered by FEMA. Right, and we discussed it last Monday about putting that dumpster there. Mm -hmm. And we're starting pick up on, on West Main also. Yeah, we did pick up last too. That's why I was just suggesting getting rid of the dumpster. And it's big. It, that pile is back, I noticed. Yeah, and it's still flood debris. Like that's the thing. I was looking at the pile on West Main, and it looked like a table that was clearly wet underneath it. Like it did. Like it was stained. I don't. I don't yeah. doubt or dispute that it's flood damage related stuff. You just worry about. The I just. Though. I don't. I don't think it's fair to the rest of the taxpayers in town to pick up that cost for flood related stuff. I think we have gone. I think we've done a tremendous amount, um, spent a tremendous amount of money um, on flood debris management. I think there's got to be an end to it at some point. I don't, I don't want it to go on forever. Mm -hmm. I just don't, you know, I want to be responsible to the people who had damage, but I also want to be responsible to the rest of the people who are paying taxes in town. We're already going to see a hell of a hit, probably, in our taxes from people asking for abatements. Legitimately so. Don't you know? Don't get me wrong. But I don't want. I just don't want it to be open ended. And if I have to make a motion, I'll make a motion. Um, but I, you know, uh, that's my concern. I, I'm completely understanding of the fact that there if is flood related deadline, stuff. What is it? What's that? If you pick a deadline, what is it? I'd make it two weeks from now. I'd make it September 15th, but it's just me. Are you right here? When's your deadline? It's a Friday. But if we're going to do something like that, we need to get the message out. We need to put the signs up. You know, no more trash in the right away after. September 15th, get get a notice on Front Porch Forum, get a notice on our web page. We need to get the, to be fair to people, whatever it is, whatever the deadline is, whether it's the, the 15th or the 30th or... The other hybrid model, because I share everybody's concerns here, uh, but if the state is willing to send trucks and the state is willing to pick the tab up that to seek reimbursement, that's still providing a service to people that are delayed, uh, not at the cost of a burden on the taxpayers. So that kind of meets both here. And Maybe you can I'm go crazy. to that Y intersection. Although, ha, Carl, is that a joke? <laughs> I missed it. What did you say? That's okay. <laughs> I liked it. It was good delivery. <laughs> I said, and, and Jason can go do that Y intersection. <laughs> 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 That's true. Uh, so, food for thought, I guess. Uh, although the state, when I spoke with Stephen Young before last Monday's meeting, did say um, they don't want debris out there in October because they understand that it's in their highway right away as well, and it's going to affect plowing uh, other yeah. winter maintenance type things. Yeah. So what if we put signs up like this week in affected areas and the signs say, it has to be Main Street too by the way when I say affected areas, and the signs say that we are, we'll do, and just we generically, there will be trash, trash debris pickup on the 1st and 8th of, this, of September. There will be final flood debris pickup on the 1st and 8th of September, and which is a week from Friday and the following Friday. 
or the 15th, maybe we wait two weeks and do another, the first and the 15th, um, and see if the state can do the pickup for us in those days. Like, let's get confirmation that that could happen, post that it's going to happen, and it will be the final pickups. I'd be okay with something like that. I just want to make sure that we're clear. What? Uh, the first and the 15th, I have, I have nobody here on the first, and the 15th, I have one person. I was going to be late. something I asked you to, to, to consider is pick a day in the week that Jason's in. That would be awesome. So it's the same day of the week, these several weeks that like you're going to do okay. this. So, <laughs> and then if that day is uh, okay. Wednesday, you could say then that you're proof that's going to end on Wednesday, September 13th or Wednesday, September 20th. But so people know that. This is the day that they're coming around, so maybe they will wait to put it out until the day before instead of putting it out six days before the pickup. What I'm worried about with that, too, is if we have it on a Friday, then there are going to be people who work through the week, and you know we're now asking them to come home on a Thursday night and put all like spend their Thursday night putting all their flood debris out for a Friday pickup. They're going to do it over the weekend anyway, regardless, and it's going to sit outside. Well, it's better that than having to pay for it yourself. I was going to say, we're not really asking people to do it. We're saying that there's a free service here. And if you want it, here's the rules. If you don't want it, take care of it yourself. It would be best if possible to end on Sunday. So everybody is pretty much here on a Monday, give or take. So brand new let have a week's off. Right now. Okay, let's. So, Labor Day? <laughs> they won't be here on Labor Day. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I already knew the answer. Um, so what if it's the tenth? Is the day? The tenth is the is a Sunday. Pick up on the eleventh. So under your scenario, Evan, we would need to. The state would potentially pick it up. We need to provide the loader. Uh, no, hundred percent confirmation on that. Stephen said right. if the town is available to provide the loader, they might ask for it which pretty much says to me yeah but uh yeah if the state if we want to ask for the state to help we probably need to provide some equipment i don't know if that can be scheduled for you know a weekly can we do it always on mondays so that jason can schedule easier i don't know if they're just going to show up and call um that would be the hard part scheduling wise Last few times we wait until the piles are kind of adequately to tandem loads roughly, so I don't have to, so I can just ship full trucks. But Evan, Evan's talking, unless I'm misunderstanding you, you, you would be seeking the state's assistance with their trucks and perhaps even the cherry picker. I I doubt probably not that gonna get we're going to get that. Yeah. Um, given our size. Yeah. In in the need, I mean, I just don't think there's that big a need to bring that level of equipment in here. It's not it's not more That's right. So that this this state's offer was to provide state dump trucks and, and potentially we would provide a lot of <coughs> upload stuff? So Conceptually, yeah. But if we ask the state for help and tell them we need help with debris removal, and they and will you're start thinking to help. that they would cover the cost of disposal? That's my understanding. I do, believe, I do believe that they cover the cost. They cover all of it and they take the document, they do the documentation. Why wouldn't we do that? what I was talking about last Monday. That's what we're talking about right now. So that's what we want to do. Yeah, How I mean, many we, hours have we spent talking about trash? Yeah, if, if we can do it that way. follow up or do you need somebody else to follow up? I just need to be told, either me or Carl, somebody, to okay. ask for their help. I can't volunteer something without board approval. And I don't think we can make a calendar tonight. Can we authorize Carl and Jason to work out a schedule in Evan will work out a schedule with the state for pickup? I don't need to step on anybody's toes if they're good with it. They Carl's been on all the emails. Anything we just I need to get 
if we're just going to say Sundays, just can we operate on Sundays? Like, ideally, the tenth and the fourth and the. I don't know. But the state isn't going to send a truck out here on a Sunday. No, we just want piles no, no, no. there. It doesn't oh, matter. Oh, by, by Sunday. We just yeah. want the piles there by <clears throat> the Sunday date. Okay. And if the state can tell us, tell us generally when they can do pickups, then we can make sure that we're publicizing the Sunday date. But we do need to pick a Sunday date because we need to make up signs and get communication out there soon if we're going to pick a date. Well, if it's, let's say the state says, yeah, we'll commit to doing this for you every Tuesday until a date in September. Then why wouldn't we use that date? That the final pickup is going to be on Tuesday, September eighteenth. I just argue like if it doesn't matter really what date we set we select. We should just pick whatever date we're going to publish. That's fine. I was saying a Sunday because people are going to have volunteers on the weekends helping them create piles on the weekends. <coughs> That's all. I have an odd but concept because I think I'm hearing something different from you, but understanding what you're saying. I I think Carl's saying like if the state says that they'll do it weekly until sure. October, Whatever. do we want to say our last date is September 10th, and then have a confusion if state trucks are going around these roads? Like could could we ask Carl or myself to contact the state and ask for help? see if Jason can coordinate with them. And if the state says our last date is X, next Monday we could decide our last date is X, kind of following their lead. Sure. Is that properly worded? I'm OK with that if everybody else is. Yeah, fine. Mark's looking at his phone, so he's good. So we're going to defer a final okay. decision to A final to decision on date tonight. will be a week so from today. But if you guys are okay with it, I don't need to put my hands in it. It's not a flood topic. We got floods every freaking day. Every day is flood topic. So it's good to me. Let's do I it. would like to know how many hours we spent talking about trash. Don't yours. Okay. Uh, yeah, they can get picked up. Yeah, before. let's pull the dumpsters. Yeah, anyway. I'm I, think, in favor. I think we're all in agreement on that. No. Okay. Pull the dumpsters. Yeah. Thank you. That's the best question of the night. Okay. Um. Assessor services. We're yeah, time. approving assessment services interlocate uh, interlocal agreement with town. <coughs> Duncan, have you read through this? Um, I have, and I, I, you know, I understand why. St. George might be concerned about a $25 processing fee, but as Carl points out, the work is the same. Um, you know, whether it's two hours or ten hours. Um, so I don't, I don't have a lot of sympathy for their concern about the $25 being excessive. And I, I'm not convinced that there's a way to equitably split those admin costs up between Hyde Park and St. George. Yeah, if they so want the, two hours a week, I agree with you. The cost is the cost. It's going to take Rosemont just as much time. Yeah, I don't know if is, uh, our contracted employee amendable to doing four hours every other week for St. George? Well, it is four George. hours a week. I think they use that two-hour example in, in the event that he has a short week okay, with him. Yeah. But he also has said now over the weekend that he would agree to getting paid every other week, mm. which has the effect of cutting the expense to St. George in half. So instead of getting four paychecks a month and having a total of $100 in payroll administration fee to be paid to Johnson, he would get paid twice a month, and then the payroll admin fee would be $50. Is St. George amenable to that? Well, we don't know that okay. yet. He, uh, Justin just advises that he's okay with the bi-weekly paycheck from all three towns. Uh, 
Well, it really would just be from Johnson, right? Well, but combined hours, he would get paid by the town of Johnson for all three towns yeah. every other week. Is Rosemary okay with that? I don't know if Rosemary's uh, she's not here to, to ask. But it, it, it's a matter of the timesheets. If he doesn't it, submit a timesheet one time week, sheet. then he doesn't yeah. get paid. He submits right. a timesheet the next week. Yeah. And it's for two weeks period, then she can do payroll. And yeah. So I don't, can you think, is there anything in the interlocal agreement as is currently written that would prohibit this? No, in fact, concept? Ron, um, representing Hyde Park, um, said that he doesn't think anything needs to change because already um, the attachment A, paragraph 7, uh, just states that these other towns would get paid or get charged $25 per pay period. Per pay so, period. so if the pay period's every two weeks, Perfect. it's still 20 yeah. Yeah. Check. I think, well, yeah. I think yeah, St. George is open to that. Then. Especially if we can, he's doing it for... Hyde Park as well, it'll save them. Some it'll money. save them money too. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. save Rosemary Edmund. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. But but wait again, we don't know St. George's response to that yeah. if, compromise. Okay. So there are can we to still it. do a motion with contention on their acceptance? <coughs> I would make a motion to authorize Beth to sign the interlocal agreement uh, contingent on uh, St. George being amenable to the uh, uh, every two week pay period concept. Second. Sure. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Uh, next up is consider approving memorandum of understanding for joint ownership of the wide format printer. Scanner so this is the device that uh, you um, approved um, buying with the town of Hyde Park and um, after checking into the details the best price on a life cycle perspective is from the same vendor that Hyde Park had approved that would be Usherwood Office Technologies, I think is the full name. And uh, the Ron and I talked about having some documentation about you know, jointly paying for and owning this machine and the administration and so on. And uh, this is um, what's in your packets, a product of Ron and I sharing thoughts. Yeah, there, um, was a question about moving it, and Justin has learned that it could be moved. Uh, the cost would be $225 an hour. Usherwood thought that it would be about an hour, but I gotta believe it'd be longer than that by the time they came to a building, disconnected it, loaded it up, drove it over there, unloaded it, reconnected it to the system. But Ron and I also agree that this isn't something that needs to be done every other year. He said that Hyde Park isn't looking at this like it needs to make this thing fair. They need to have it 50% of the time. It would only make sense to move it if there was a lot of work that needed to be done in one location or another. And it would just make sense to have it in that location for an extended period of time. And right now he doesn't see that, doesn't foresee that with Hyde Park. Their, their office is on higher ground. I was, <laughs> I was going to say actually, we should maybe add to the future uh, emergency plan to, you know, move the, move the copier to Hyde Park. Still, put on still. <laughs> or that, yeah. Will the village use this copier? The, the village of Johnson, yes, with, with their, their operation, mm -hmm. their three main responsibilities, I could see them using it for engineering plans. Is there a second half to that question? Associated fee schedule? <laughs> I leave that up to Evan. What? 
<laughs> the associated fee schedule mm -hmm. if other entities want to use it. Okay, are we, what are we doing here with the copier? Do we want to have a motion? I would make a motion to authorize Beth to sign the MOU with uh, Hyde Park to purchase the Usherwood uh, wide format printer. Can we just have Pending Hyde Park's approval. Okay, well, do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Ayes have it. And I do think it is worth our time to revisit the discussion of fees for outside entities once we have it. Because um, it's going to cost money to run the thing. Yeah, we should definitely. I mean, if, if XYZ developer comes in and wants a copy of a set of you know, these prints, there definitely should be a fee schedule set up. Yeah. To what do they pay per page now for like 11 by 17? Or eight and a half by 11? Say 10 cents a copy? That's Around there, yeah. yeah. Seven and a half to 10 cents is yeah. common. Yeah. Now having said that, times that. We, we as a municipal entity, you can only charge what's considered a fair and reasonable rate um, for those. So the copier company could probably tell us, yeah. you know, what a, yeah. you know, what Just the ink and the paper and, and all that should be. A thousand bucks a sheet. <laughs> a second. Yeah. All right. Are we on to the next one? Yep. Uh, public notices of select board um, agendas and public notices. Carl, you're suggesting that we um, continue to use the town clerk post board and also the temporary library location at the Mississippi Masonic Temple. And the post office, right? And the post office. And the post office. I really like that idea. Okay. It's Move so to approve. Yes. Second. Stated. Move to be supportive of that. Don't write that down. Are you writing second? Are you saying second? I second. Oh, you said second. <laughs> it's okay. Um, ignore it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Um, the VLCT voting delegate. Maybe we can corner somebody from passive. <laughs> I would suggest that if, depending on the outcome of our executive session, item later in the meeting that we defer that delegation. The time. delegation? Oh, okay. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm. Nobody here is jumping at the chance. Unless so somebody really wants to do, do it. Do I go to the VLCT town hall? As a voting delegate? Change it. I mean, I'd go. I would not go. I, um, liked, I like deferring it. I, I, yeah, if we... It. There's no reason like you couldn't go. Right. You know, anyway. If I decide between this week and next week that I really want to go, I'll let you guys know. I'm already, my hesitation is because I'm already serving on a board as a VLCT representative. Um, my first meeting of that board is tomorrow, by the way. What but is the board? The Opiate Advisory Committee that I had. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, I know there's no reason I can't do that, but I don't necessarily want to. Uh, have too many conflicts in, in place, so. Well, and you could, I mean, even if we decide to appoint the voting delegate, you could, all, you could just attend right. the VLCT town fair. If, if you've never been, if, any, if anybody's never been, it's, you know, it's generally a pretty good thing to do. I actually considered it this year, but I'll leave away. So. Like a hot date idea. A what? A hot date idea. Never know, Mark. Yeah, Look into it for a hot date. You might need to go. Um, okay, so we'll defer that one. Okay. We were a little. I wanted to get on up. Um, okay, there's a reason. Are we on to the next agenda item? Nope. There's a reason that um, it was on today's. 
Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's due by September 8th. Yep. And next Monday we do have a meeting, so yeah. that's all good. And am I jumping the gun or did I? For the voting delegate? Are we still on the same uh, item? Yeah, yeah, for the voting delegate. Just yeah. for awareness, we'll talk about this a little bit later too, but the reason that it's on this agenda is because I thought for other reasons we may push it out and I wanted us to be talking about it. Um, and next Monday is hopefully our last meeting before the 8th because I'm going to propose a little bit later that we cancel Labor Day meeting. But anyway, we'll get to that a little bit later. So my suggestion isn't necessarily to defer it to another meeting. It's to defer it to the end of this meeting, end of this meeting where we have an executive session meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm suggesting that we could make an appointment. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll push this one to the end then. Okay. Um, number 17. So we were talking, Carl is traveling. So if we, we got all recall back to what feels like a very long time ago when we first uh, we're lucky enough to have Carl join us as interim. Um, that's like a lifetime ago now. Yeah. Uh, he told us at the time that he'd be traveling quite often and this schedule would work quite well for that. <laughs> well, things have changed significantly, but Carl is still traveling. So um, Carl will be going away <coughs> for the weekend over Labor Day and days around Labor Day weekend, uh, which I, of course, fully support. And also, we haven't really had a break from all things town business in quite a while. I would just propose that we cancel Labor Day meeting. I'll second that. I don't know. I need a second. Do we? Isn't Labor Day the fourth? Yeah. The third. That's a Sunday. Monday is the fourth. Labor Day is probably the fourth. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, it's the fourth. Right that one. And we will so be meeting meet on the 11th. Huh? Yeah, we can meet on the third. You're right. So we would be meeting the 28th and the 11th, yes. But not the third. Proposals right. dropped. Uh, sorry about that. It's okay. It's all right. You're allowed one mistake <laughs> per, per hire. by any of them. What did you say? Did you make a motion? <coughs> I don't what even know what you did. We don't need a motion. Oh, we do have it actually. We do have that like motion to cancel the meeting on September fourth. Regularly scheduled select board meeting. Second. Votes. Aye. Uh huh. Aye. That was easy. I had this feeling that I have been weekend to have to argue that. You're gonna miss me that week. Public portalettes. <laughs> we added to the agenda public portalettes. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Pick them up. I say pick them up. I, I do, more. too. Um, I sent uh, Rosemary the information about who the, uh, who the, um, contact. the contractor was for that, um, but Rosemary is uh, not around. There must be a bill. I was thinking there's a bill somewhere. It's um, Michaud's. Michaud, yeah. I can get the number off. Out of Hardwood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we should have them pick them up. Especially the one. I, I'd pick them Just both pick up. Just pick, pick them Yeah, pick up both of them. Yeah, I agree. Just pick them up and move them around. So where, Just put them um, in a different spot. I know about the one on Westcombe Road. Where's, where's the second one? There's road? one, well, there was one in front of Bob Boag's property on Main Street. I don't think there's one there now. It's not there? Is there Jason, why do you look at the, yeah, what are you looking at? I'm just listening. Mm -hmm. Mystery of the missing board potty, anybody? Yeah, here we go. Really? There should be two. I don't know if there's one there. I was just listening. I look across that street Sorry. regularly. I don't recall. Well, it's the kind of thing you could easily miss. It probably is. Especially if it's tipped over. It might be camouflaged. Well, if it's not there, we should try and find out where it is. Who's got it? <laughs> really? Maybe somebody picked it up. Maybe me showed already picked it yeah, up. Yeah, they might have picked it up. But, okay, you're, yeah. You're giving them a lot more credit. They call the name Mitchard. Huh? Mitchard. Hardwick, their Mitchard. name is Mitchard. Not Mitchard, it's Mitchard. 
not be show. That's the French pronunciation. Calais. Well, if you lived in Franklin County, you'd pronounce it Michel. I know. But Hardwick? <laughs> it's Mitchell. Not Hardwick? It's Mitchell. Yeah. All right. So All right. we know what we're doing with the porta potties. Yep. Pick them up. And now we know how to okay. pronounce Mitchell and Hardwick. Yeah. Executive session to talk about potential employment offer. I missed acceptance. Yeah, I missed not. the beginning, but I there know. was supposed well, to be an employee evaluation. Um, okay. Are you skipping right over the, the other notes? Okay. Yes. Girls? I'm looking at this. Yeah, the high level. Yes. Well, please Because you did have a couple other notes that I think are probably appropriate items to mm -hmm. kind of have give us a brief discussion on. Oh, so oh, so are, um, your notes on the, uh, the inspection of the bridge. For one. Okay. So these aren't agenda items. No. This is just the more information. Yeah. Is there questions about that, yeah, Duncan? Sure. They're not like actual agenda items, nope. but they're part of the packet. No, nope, they're not. Um, the the one thing that I would ask a question about, and I did ask um, Carl today about, was the issue of the DRB, because this came out at our last board meeting. Wait, what's the DRB? Oh, development well, review board, board. Yeah. whether or not planning commission members could be right. DRB members and clearly the MAC attorney said yes what I'm less clear about is and I don't know if you get any answer on is whether or not you can have a DRB and the board of adjustment at the same time so if a municipality had a zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations and prior to the early 2000s, as you probably remember, you would have um, a planning commission and they would have been reviewing subdivision plans and you would have a zoning board of adjustment to hear variances from the zoning ordinance. Right. Then, then you ha municipalities had the option of creating a, this development review board or a DRB and that board um, assume some of the planning commission's duties, namely to hear the variances and approve subdivisions, as well as continue to hear uh, the variances. So, um, clearly, you know, under in that situation, a municipality can't have both a DRB and a zoning board of adjustment. The confusion here in Johnson is that you have a floodplain regulation zoning bylaw and you also have form based code uh, and so do those and for the form based code the town chose to call its appeal board well, that's the generic term we'll use a, a DRB mm -hmm. and on the old floodplain regulation it's called a board of adjustment as opposed to zoning board of adjustment, just board of adjustment. It also could have been called a board of appeals. So do those constitute DRB and like the equivalent of a zoning board of adjustment? Uh, we, don't, I, we don't know the answer to that yet. Again, uh, Ron Redjenski was in the office today, so I asked him if he had any insight on this and he didn't accept he had a suggestion for me to check with a person at the county planning commission who we thought maybe was involved in helping johnson with its form-based code i did get to talk with him this evening and he said that he was not involved with that but he thought that another town here in lamoille county answered the same question he thought several years ago um, but by that time, you know, it was after hours. I so was unable to get an answer from that community. If what was the, who was the community? Cambridge. Um, so they might have broken this ground already. Um, so we'll have to check into that, see if they know the answer. I would think it would be well worth a five minute phone call with somebody at Stitzel Page and Fletcher too. Just, to, I mean, to, to me the statute's fairly clear. It says 
you won't have them. You can't have the, you can't have them. You can't have them at the same time. I guess the question is, is that applicable to an adoption of an ordinance that was done in the 90s in a development review board today? But I think if we're going to have a board take, so our, our I would only add to what Carl said that does the Board of Adjustment does variances, but they also do conditional uses. And our floodplain zoning regulation really is more concerned with conditional use approval than it is necessarily variance, although there could be a variance request. And conditional use approval is something that a DRB does by operation of statute as well. My, my only point is I don't want to have a board make a ruling only to have a landowner challenge the ruling and have it thrown out in court because we didn't follow statutory guidance. There's got to be other towns that have faced this situation and Stitzelbank and Fletcher were, are going to only answer that, I would think. Okay. A five-minute call doesn't exist in the lawyer, but I yeah. think it's fine. Well, <laughs> <laughs> 15, 15 minutes. minutes. They're going to charge by increments of 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes. At least. We'll get to that minutes. Minutes. Yeah. But I, I think they're probably going to know the answer to that fairly quickly and easily. But I don't see this as being a thousand dollar question. Found me. Get to that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so. <coughs> Executive session. What's this for? Hold on, please hold on to my first page again. Executive session for potential employment offer acceptance discussion. Update. It's not update. So it's about employment offer. Uh, actually, we'll make it two uh, one for the TA and one for the CED. And there's no. Are we good with you? There can be, if I have time to go grab it. Wait, what do you need? What uh, are you grabbing? Potential evaluation of an employee. Oh, uh, uh, uh. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that first. Well, that Sorry, let's meeting. do that first. No, he just said it can't be the first one. It can't be the first one, but if you guys are going to be in the next session for 10, 15 minutes, I can go grab it. Yeah, yeah go grab it. Go ahead. Okay, so do you want to do that or do you want to do it another meeting? No, we should do it tonight. Let's just get it over. Okay. okay. So, potential employment offer and potential offer of employment. So, for potential acceptance of the employment offer update and then a potential offering of employment. Those are the two topics. So, so those are both topics for the same executive session? Same executive session, okay. yep. So, can somebody so move via. One BSA three thirteen eight three. Three, yeah. Second. Okay. Uh, okay those hold, hold on a second. I motion to enter into executive session <laughs> for potential appointment of employment as allowed by one BSA three thirteen A three. Potential action coming out of executive session. And also you can do both of them in the same one because they both apply and a potential offer of employment. They're both 318. I like that. Three, I believe. Yeah, they are. Did you get that, Donna? Actually, I'm getting more and more confused. Every, 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 every time I speak, I got gotcha. you. can't imagine why. I'm getting a drink of water. I'm a yes vote on this executive. Come out and then go back in. I just want to do both. I'm always confused. Potential. What are, what are we doing here? Just read the whole thing. Say a motion to executive session for the whole thing. It'll cover all of it. I motion to go into executive session for the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. But the public body must make a final decision to hire an open. Yes, that's fine. Sure. I'm confused too, Donna. <laughs> 
case you didn't pick up on that. Um, so that we can offer, uh, accept a previous offer of employment and also discuss a potential offer of employment. That's what I said, Donna. We want to do both things in that one executive session, the, which that's not your so, so, so the first thing is, like, consider someone else's acceptance of your previous offer? Yep. Okay. Okay, now we have a motion. Are you good with the second part, too? Yeah, and the second part is to discuss a different potential offer. Yes. Uh, is there a second? I did second. There's a second by Duncan. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. We are in executive session at 8.50.